In this video, we're going to be taking a look at SolidWorks sketch blocks for mechanical assembly, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we are covering SolidWorks. Now, SolidWorks is something that I have been a longtime user of. I just haven't really used it much in the past few years. I've focused mainly on Fusion 360 for a few different reasons. But we are now back in SolidWorks, and I will be covering it on this channel. Don't fret if you are a Fusion user or if you're using Plasticity or any of the other things that we cover here, I will still be covering everything. I'm just sort of adding more to the mix. So for this first Return to SolidWorks video, I wanted to cover something that I covered a long time ago at a SolidWorks World presentation. This is something called Sketch Blocks. And I'm gonna do this over a few videos because there's quite a lot to it. But in this first video, we're looking at a sketch in a part. Now I wanna explain what a sketch block is and why you might wanna use it for your mechanical assemblies. Now in the past, if you're designing some sort of mechanism, you probably designed parts in 3D, you put them into an assembly, you made them all together, got the mechanical motion, and then went back and modified those parts. Now that is a long process, especially if the design is complicated. So we're looking at a motorcycle swing arm and essentially a four bar linkage system. And we're gonna be taking a look at how sketch blocks can simplify that process. So first, we don't need a detailed sketch. This is actually way more detailed than we actually need, but it does help us prove a point. So first, how do we make a sketch block? Well, a sketch block is going to be a sub sketch. We're gonna do that going to the tools menu and down to blocks, or you can add it to your toolbar if you want. We can add an additional tab for uh, sketch information and we can put the block tools on there, or we can just simply go to a toolbar and open up the blocks. I like to have them floating around the screen because I don't use it all the time. I really don't like to clutter up the window with a bunch of toolbars, but if that's how you operate, it's perfectly fine. You can also use the S key and add it to the S key shortcuts, but outside of the realm of this video, we're gonna focus on making blocks. So first things first, we're going to make a block. And to make a block, we need to select the sketch entities that we want as part of that sub sketch. I'm gonna start simple with just these two. And I'm gonna include these two as well. These are gonna be representative of the frame of the motorcycle. And as I said, this doesn't have to be complex. This can be relatively simple. Now these can now move together. They're gonna to be moving as one. And I'm gonna simply fix it in space. And when I fix it in space, now they're locked. They're not gonna be really moving around. I need to fix this one because it's free to rotate about that point. And now we've locked our frame in space. Without having to design the actual frame, we now have the attachment points for our shock and the swing arm. So the next thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating the shock itself. So I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna convert it to a sketch block. You can also see that this is popping up on my in context menu. So all we really need to do here is select it and go to make block. Now, one of the reasons why you might want to use these the toolbars is because there are other options that do not become available from that quick context menu. So for example, when I select a block, I have make block, but over here I have explode, which turns it back into a traditional sketch. So keep in mind that there are some things that we may need the sketch block tools for. So now that we have a essentially what we're gonna be using as a shock, I'm gonna drag it and snap it here. I'm gonna drag this point and snap it on here. And then I'm gonna select these two and make them collinear. By making them collinear, this means that they're always gonna be traveling in the same direction similar to how a shock will move. We don't have a spring on it or a damper or anything like that, but we can do those things when we get into an assembly layout sketch, which I'll talk about in a future video. So next, let's go ahead and turn the swing arm into a sketch block. So I'm just gonna work my way around. We can box select if you want to add entities. So if you're going bottom right to top left, it's gonna grab anything that you cross over, top left to bottom right. You're gonna to have to have everything completely inside of that box. We'll say okay, and now the swing arm is a sketch block. I'm gonna snap it to the origin. That's gonna be my reference point for this frame. And now everything moves up and down as it should as a pivoting swing arm would about that point. Next, we're gonna repeat this process. We're gonna do this with our slot and the two holes here. This extra hole on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And we're gonna do the same thing with the linkage. So once again, just working our way around, box selecting if you want to speed the process up. And this is really what helps 
modeling these things sort of further away, is it lets you box select them. So now we have all of our sketch blocks. It's time to start to put it together. So I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to attach it to my swing arm. I'm going to drag this down, and I'm going to attach it here. This is going to attach to the frame, and then it's going to rotate around. And you see, well, it's not long enough. The linkage geometry isn't right. It just doesn't fit. Well, if that happens, because we're dealing with sketch blocks, we can always make changes. Now, the change could be this linkage needs to be longer. We'll simply go into edit mode, and we'll increase its length. Right now, I've got it at 5 inches. It looks like it probably needs to be closer to 9 or 10. And it looks like 9 is probably a little short, so I'm going to go ahead and make it 10 inches. And then we'll finish. And now I can simply attach it. I'm going to control select both points, make them coincident. Now everything's attached. So now if I move the swing arm up and down, we can see that it is compressing the shock. Now, of course, mechanical systems, when we're talking about multiple bar linkages, there will be a position where they become unstable. Now, this is also important to see if we're talking about a large travel motocross bike, for example, we would want to figure out at what point we have those issues. Now, when we're talking about doing this at the part level, we don't really have the kinematic options that we do at the assembly level, which is why a layout sketch and doing this at an assembly is pretty helpful. What we're also going to talk about is the ability to save blocks externally, things like common bolt patterns that you may use, and even traditional things that you might bring into an assembly where you really don't need the entire part. You can use sketch blocks for those. This is not as far as Sketchbox will go. I will cover this in a few more videos, but this is a great introduction and something that you can get started with and playing around with. From here, if you start designing your parts in a single part file as individual bodies, you can easily export them to an assembly, or you can continue to work with Sketchbox in an assembly capacity. Really depends on what you're designing. That's as far as I want to take this video. If you learned anything, please let me know in the comments. If you use Sketchbox, what do you use them for? Traditionally, people use them for belts and pulleys assemblies. There's also friction. There's all kinds of fun things that we can do with them, and I will get into those in future videos. If you have any SOLIDWORKS video suggestions, please let me know that as well. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.